Hi, welcome to the latest vidcast. Um, as usual, it's based on the seven finds in the third blog for September 2010. Um, the first find today is actually one from the Times Educational Supplement. Uh, it's a new website offering news, advice and inspiration for those who have or who are entering the teaching profession. Uh, it's got lots of free teaching tips and articles, resources to download and tools to help new teachers find a new job. If we go on to the website which is no www.justnewteachers.tes.co.uk you'll see let me just zoom in here we go this will be better you'll see that there are sections on um, in the classroom um, confidence in the classroom uh, etc let's just zoom back out again and scroll down um, career choices, the lowdown on supply teaching, uh, live advice clinics for trainees and non-qualified teachers. There is art for art's sake as a, as a blog, etc. Okay, there's a lot of resources in there which I'm sure many new teachers and also those on initial uh, teacher training could find useful. The second find uh, today is a blog. Um, we've all heard of the phrase death by PowerPoint, get rid of the endless bullet points. Well, this blog actually looks at um, the, the changes that have been made um, when people started to look carefully at presentations and how things have improved to make them more engaging, more informative, uh, more memorable but there always is a danger that we go too far and um, regard words as an enemy I suppose that's the other extreme well this particular blog and I'll go to it now gives you nine reasons why you should put words onto your slide it's an interesting read and there are a number of diagrams etc as well as um, video clips that you may well want to have a good look at so as I say go to um, speaking about presenting uh, from Olivia Mitchell and see what you think the third find today really is looking at how uh, Twitter can be used to communicate in a more compact way rather than random tweets some of you will realize that I have already been using paper.li that lets users create a daily Twitter newspaper. If I just click on here, this is the one that I produce. It's ACL John um, Daily. And basically the people that I follow, the people that I find interesting, as well as my own tweets, are included in a sort of newspaper. There's a bit from Paul Richardson, my equivalent in Wales, or one of my equivalents, should I say. There's various bits about um, podcasts. There's the section over here uh, of my tweets. There's a little bit about technology from Paul McKean from um, Bolton uh, Community College. There's some video clicks from Craig Taylor etc so it puts it together in a newspaper which means that I don't have to scurry through all of the various um, tweets and try to get some sort of coherence out of it um, I'm pretty sure that many of you would find that useful perhaps to pull together things that your learners uh, might find interesting especially if you can find those who are tweeting about the subject that you are interested in well, that's the first part. That, that's old news, I suppose. But more interesting is um, my tweet mag, which is something I found fairly recently. You can actually have an editor and up to five co-editors. Um, you can join with your Twitter account and you can start your own magazine. There, there is a video clip, and I'll just play the start of it.
the history. Everything started with a tweet. And more tweets. And even more tweets. And soon it ended up in big chaos. And people started suffering from a new disease. Information overkill. But some brave Twitterer, in a share of interest, decided to bring order into the chaos. Okay, it goes on to talk about my tweet mag. Uh, I've actually produced one. I've called it UNET, as you'll, you'll see here. Just hang on a minute and I'll show you where I mean. Uh, just change the colour to blue. There's the title there, UNET. Okay. Um, this is my tweet mag and basically uh, Anita, one of my uh, fellow uh, advisors and I uh, are having a play with this and basically we can um, use this to actually flag up pieces of interest uh, when we tweet by using hashtags and we can also come up with a calendar. There's a, an online event today, Zerti, which you may just have missed. But that allows you again to produce a magazine and I can imagine that you could use this for flagging up things of importance, especially in the calendar for deadlines, um, for tutorials, etc. for the groups that you're working with. Well worth taking a look at. Um, and that's my tweet mag. Um, the fourth thing, I suppose, is a, a letter that I had from Alan Tuckett, the chief executive from NICE, where he's actually asking people to give feedback on what you think. There is a link on my website, acljohn.posterous.com. The link is at the bottom of the page. And when you go in, there is the NICE perception survey and you just click on start survey and go through and fill in your answers. As an added bonus, I suppose, there is in fact um, the chance to win either a free place at NICE conference or £50 worth of NICE books, books of your choice. The fifth find is a video, uh, a green video, I suppose, but a lesson starter on the hassles of plastic, in particular uh, plastic bags. It's called uh, a mockumentary because it's extracting the urine, I think is the word, um, but well worth a look. It's there for you to um, play either within my blog or on YouTube. And then we've got, as the sixth and seventh find, a number of um, art finds, I suppose. Uh, the first one, Explore and Learn, is actually from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in uh, New York. There's a lot of resources here, and they are changing constantly. I mean, so we've got Cezanne's Astonishing Apples there. You've got... Um, Marduk, King of the Gods, etc. There's Van Gogh, there's some art on China, there's some kids' questions and answers as well. Um, the other one on the same site, in fact, is the Helbrun timeline of art history. And again, if I go to that, there are world maps that you can select to have a look at a particular art within a region. There are various timelines for um, Europe, Asia, Africa, etc. There are thematic essays, there are works of art that you want to have a look at, there is an index, etc. Again, well worth having a look. And I suppose the final find of today, which I want you to be aware of, again, it's art orientated. We seem to be very arty today, is the art history resource on the web. It is, in fact, let me just check his name, maintained by Christopher L.C.E. Whitcomb, who's an art history professor. And he has links to every possible category, I think, of art that art practitioners and or learners may find useful. Again, uh, the link is at the top of the page. I hope you found that useful and I look forward to the next um, vidcast uh, and talking to you again about more finds.